Okay, now we have a presentation about Prompt Toolkit. For people who don't know, Prompt Toolkit is used in ePython, in, in, in several pro uh, famous products. Uh, <coughs> big ov ovation, please. Thank you. Um, oh, I don't have the screen yet. There we go. Uh, good afternoon. So I have a presentation about Prompt Toolkit. And Prompt Toolkit is actually a library for building common line applications. Um, for instance, IPython is using it. Some other projects are using it. So uh, during this presentation, you will see a few examples of projects using that. Um, Prompt Toolkit, actually, I presented it about two years ago, so maybe some of you have already seen it back then. Um, in the last two years, I made a lot of progress in Prompt Toolkit. And actually, this presentation is a bit about showing the progress and the future where we are going to. Um, the idea about Prompt Toolkit is also um, to show that common line applications can actually be usable and user friendly. So very often there is uh, um, some common misconception maybe that using a command line does mean that something cannot be user friendly or um, usable. And actually Prompt Toolkit focuses actually completely on making uh, command line applications more usable. Um, so this is me, I'm working for Cisco. Um, you can find me on GitHub or Twitter. Um, so Prompt Toolkit. Actually, in the first place, Prompt Toolkit is a, read, a GNU read line replacement. So if you know GNU read line, it's actually the library that's used for reading input from the user. So for instance, if you're using the bash shell or ZSH or any shell, every time when you have to type some input, it is the GNU read line library that's actually handling all of your keystrokes. And that means that read line processes your input, but also gives feedback, which makes it possible for you to see what you're typing. And read line, for instance, is also responsible for handling the key bindings and so on. Also in Python, if we would execute input call, or in case you're using Python 2 still, the raw input call, they are using read line. So these are places where you ask for input and then um, there's the read line library handling um, that part. Um, so these are a few screenshots in any of these applications um, read line is used. Now read line actually, it's implemented in C, it has a an history of, of many years. It's good in a way that it's very cross-platform, but it's hard to make changes to read line because um, it's written in C and um, it's hard to act at functionality because you cannot break something and people are relying on, on how it works. Um, so Prompt Toolkit tries to do a bit of that. Uh, basically it comes down to, uh, we take some input on the left side and these are the escape sequences that you see over there. Then there's Prompt Toolkit in the middle that processes all those key bindings and reacts to um, whatever handlers you have attached to the key bindings and then it renders the output to the terminal usually also using that kind of keystrokes. Um, we have both Windows and Linux support or Mac support. Um, so this is what Prompt Toolkit would do in the case of a Linux system or a Mac system. In the case of a Windows system, we use um, the Windows command line, sorry, the, the Windows API for uh, interacting with the Windows console. Um, so we have a bit of the read line functionality which includes auto-completion, incremental search, VI and Emacs key bindings, and there's an input history. Now the interesting part, what can we do more than read line? And in the first place, we can do syntax highlighting. And uh, unfortunately, I cannot show um, a demo because it doesn't work well with the microphone and, and, and this setup. But uh, you should imagine that we have a prompt that asks for HTML as input. And then while typing, while the user is typing, we are actually able to provide syntax highlighting. And that's something which is extremely interesting when you want to build an interactive shell for, for instance, um, maybe a database client. 
if you're going to write an, an SQL client, you want to have SQL syntax highlighting. Um, syntax highlighting is something very nice to have and very user-friendly. Um, further, we have auto completion. Readline also has auto completion, and PromptTalk is able to display the auto completion just like Readline does. Um, but we also have a different way of showing that using this kind of auto completion menu. So if you press the tab key, uh, you get a drop down like this just in your normal terminal. And here we have a screenshot of Windows. Um, so even here you have uh, the same, same kind of auto completion in the console. Um, we have several ways of rendering the auto completion. So you can have multiple columns, one columns. You can style the, the, the colors as you wish. A second thing is input validation, and input validation is something quite nice to have in, uh, in an interactive shell like a Python shell. Let's say you're typing something and you forgot uh, um, a quote or a closing parenthesis uh, causing a syntax error. So rather than displaying a message, you have a syntax error and asking the user to, ask to input the same uh, quote again. What we do is we just display the message syntax error and we move the cursor to the place where the user had a syntax error. So that saves quite a lot of time. Um, this, by the way, is the PT Python shell, a, a Python alternative, an alternative Python shell that I made, but IPython um, has now the same functionality. We also have multi-line editing, and that's something that many people have been missing for a long time in Python. So, um, in a normal Python shell, you can enter multi-line statements, but it's impossible for the cursor to move back up uh, through the lines. So, let's say you have code like this, and you want to insert a new line in the middle of this code. That's just impossible to do with a normal Python shell. And Prompt Toolkit um, implements some multi-line editing, which makes uh, um, the Python shell more pleasant to use. Um, further, we have mouse support, which means that you can use the, the mouse pointer, uh, and if you click, uh, you can move the cursor uh, wherever you want, um, if, if that's enabled. So, in code, what does it take? Just do pip install prompt toolkit, and then uh, you have that as a library available, and you can use it in any application. Um, the easiest example for using that is just importing the prompt from prompt toolkit at shortcuts. You call it, and then you get the interactive prompt, and the result is assigned to the answer variable. Um, so, this is basically a replacement for the input call. The, the syntax is the same. But the prompt function takes further a lot of additional uh, arguments. For instance, if you pass multiline equals true, you can ask the user for multiline input. Or if you pass is password equals true, then the input is displayed in asterisks. Or you can make things in VI mode. You can pass a lexer if you want to have syntax highlighting. You can pass a validator if you want to have some custom input validation. Um, you can pass a completer um, style is used for the colors. So if you want to change the colors, you can pass a different style. Um, by the way, for lexers and for styles, we um, you, we support pigments. So if you want to use a lexer which is already implemented by the pixels by the pigments syntax highlighting library, you can reuse that, and the same for the style sheets. But uh, you don't have to use pigments, of course. Um, a more complex example is uh, a custom CLI that does compilation, in this case, on animal names. And in fact, it's quite simple. You can create a word completer instance that tells the words uh, that uh, Prompt Toolkit has to use for suggesting auto completions. You can pass a style like this that's completely optional, but maybe you want to change the colors. And then you pass both the completer and the style object as an argument to the prompt function. Um, 
So the community is growing a bit compared to two years ago. So maybe you cannot read it, but that's a list of all projects that are now using Prompt Toolkit. And among them, we have several um, database clients like uh, a Postgres client, MySQL client. The one on the right, by the way, is PGCLI, which is very nice Postgres client, um, which has all those uh, features like syntax highlighting and, and code completion and so on. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to show a few examples of uh, projects using that, um, using screenshots. So we have already discussed PT Python is an alter alternative Python REPL that has uh, most of uh, the functionality. Um, it also has a nice uh, menu where you can change the settings and styles and um, all the options um, without leaving the REPL. Uh, PT Python also has an history, so if you want to fetch lines back from history by composing several entries from the history together, you can go to this history window. You you just uh, scroll up and you select the entries that you want in your REPL. Um, so last summer, I Python 5 was released, and before that, I've contrib I've worked together quite a lot with several of the I Python core developers, and we managed to get the prompt toolkit functionality um, uh, as part of I Python. Um, it was quite a challenge because there was a lot of uh, legacy code we had to rewrite, um, but the end result is that everything that you've seen so far um, is now part of the I Python shell which means uh, code completion, multi-line editing, and so on. Um, there's also um, SAWS, which is an Amazon uh, AWS client. Um, it's a bit similar. It has also those completion menus. There's Conch, which is um, an alter alternative shell. So it's an alternative for Bash, but written in Python. Um, in fact, it's quite usable. Um, it's, it's quite easy to use, and the nice thing is that in the shell, you can use the normal bash commands like uh, CD and, um, and so on, but actually you can also type Python in this shell, and I believe it's quite scriptical, uh, scriptable. Um, I'm not an expert in conch, but there is a very nice presentation about it from PyCon last year, uh, so maybe you want to look, uh, look at that. There's HTTP prompt, which is a front end for HTTP high, so it combines those two libraries, um, so which is a nice way for debugging HTTP requests. Um, then we have a few full screen applications. Um, in the first place, we have PyVim, which is actually a VI clone in Python. And there's actually a little story behind because two years ago when I presented this talk about prompt toolkits, somebody in the audience asked me, what does it take actually to write a real editor using this? Because I had most of the functionality. I had those editing functionality, all of those read line key bindings, which in the end are not that different from what VI does. And so we have Python. Um, you can play with it. I, I'm not saying I'm, use this, I'm not using this all the time. Um, it has some issues with big files, and there's of course still missing some functionality. But the basic features, what you're expecting from VI, um, are actually working. And even things like horizontal and vertical splits and at completion and some of the commands are working in uh, in Python. So actually, you can more think of it as uh, as a showcase of what is possible with Prompt Toolkit rather than actually something you want to use. Um, further, we have Pymux, which is actually a Tmux clone in Python. So maybe you know Tmux, this very nice terminal multiplexer. It allows you to split the terminal in several panes, where in each pane you are actually emulating a terminal. A nice thing about Tmux is that you can detach from the terminal and attach and attach at several clients at the same time. Pymax does actually most of that, and the performance actually is quite well. When it was released, like I think about a year ago, the performance was not that good, but right now it's almost comparable with uh, Tmux actually. 
So if you like terminal multiplexers, you may uh, want to try this. It has some features actually that Tmux does not have. Um, like there's an auto completion menu. If you go in a command line mode, there is highlighting of search if you search through the callback buffer. So it has some additional features, but it's also missing uh, some of the functionality that Tmux has. Then I actually never announced this, um, so probably nobody is using it, but as a proof of concept, I made a pager in Python. So maybe you know it, there's something like less and more, which are, and most, which are actually pagers for displaying man pages. And the interesting thing about the pager is that it can take in a stream as input. So um, if you do a, a tail on a file, or if, if you have a very large file, and um, you pipe it in a pager, then the pager does not have to read the whole file into memory, but it streams. And actually, that was what I was trying to do in PyPager, and actually, it's working quite well. Um, so maybe in the near future, I want to do some more development on this. I'm not sure yet. Um, so actually, if you're interested, maybe have a look. So now we are going to to large prompt toolkit 2.0, and it's actually a big refactoring that's uh, more focused on full screen applications. So something like we have Erwit right now in Python, which is used for building full screen applications. But uh, so far, the architecture of prompt toolkits, while it was user friendly for having simple prompts like in readline, the API for building full screen applications was not that user friendly. And I got a lot of questions in the last two years from people asking for help for building those things. And I realized that there were some things that I had to change. Um, right now I don't have the time, I, I guess, to go more in detail, but um, the idea is that Prompt Toolkit 2 will have more the concept of widgets, like um, if you were designing a graphical user interface, you, d you think about widgets like a button, like a menu, um, like a scroll bar, and those widgets, they can be focusable and they can have key bindings. And actually, that's what we try to do in Prompt Toolkit. Um, I'm almost there, but probably it will take a few more months to, to be sure that the API is stable, that we have the documentation, the examples, and that we are ready for releasing that. This is an example of what it can look like. Um, this is actually a working example that I have like right now uh, on the 2.0 branch. Uh, you see that there's a menu at the top where there are two input fields. Uh, there are two buttons at the bottom and by using the tab key you can actually switch between all those fields. And given that it's prompt toolkit underneath, that means that for, for instance, the input fields you can have things like syntax highlighting and uh, code completion and so on. Um, but there's still some work to do to have uh, a nice collection of widgets, but we're getting there. So that means that also, given that the API is going to change, we will have to rewrite PyVim and PyMux, which I intend to do just for testing the API to make sure that we make the right API decisions before releasing it. Because I'm sure that while I'm re rewriting these applications against Prompt Toolkit 2, I will uh, di um, discover some maybe some inconsistencies in the API or some things that have to change. Um, so because of that, uh, we need a bit more of time. Um, I guess I've said the most things at the bottom, at the top, I mean, um, there's some refactoring in the event loops, um, not super important. We think about supporting input RC. Uh, many people ask me for having input RC rep, um, support because they have custom key bindings in red line. They want them in prompt, to have them in prompt to look at as well. And better Windows support. Windows 10 now supports ANSI escape sequences, which means that we can use uh, VT100 escape sequences on a Windows uh, system. And that should make the rendering much more uh, fluent. Um, so this is the this is state where I am right now. As you can see, there are quite a lot of changes. There's not much more functionality. It's, it's mainly refactoring um, to the code base. But but we're coming there. And that's all I have, so thank you. Yeah, we still have five more minutes, so in case there are any questions, uh, feel free to ask them, yes? 
for the key bindings, do you use the same syntax as uh, GNU read line? Um, so, for the key bindings, we actually we have a custom C uh, syntax, which is quite Pythonic, but we intend to support uh, parsing the read line syntax because we are going to support input RC and in input RC you can have read line key bindings. So actually the intention is to be able to parse those key bindings and turn that into prompt toolkit key bindings. And that's actually the intention. We are not there yet, but we, uh, that's on the to-do list. Um, yes? Yes, uh, we had the <coughs> prompt toolkit one for command line interface. Uh, we had Urvid for widget-like interface. Why to do a prompt toolkit two, uh, Urvid, Urvid like? To do it again? Yes. Oh, which one is the best? Uh, why? Change from to prompt toolkit ah, why, why change from Urbit to prompt toolkit? Um, if you're using Urbit, you can keep using that. Um, that's perfectly fine. But there's a lot of functionality in prompt toolkit that Urbit does not have. Things like syntax highlighting, um, all those key bindings, the read line key bindings ex are extremely complex. There are thousands of key bindings, especially if you go in VI, where key bindings are composed. Um, Erwet does not have that, and uh, rewriting that on Erwet would take a lot of time. And it turns out that people are extremely sensitive when key bindings that they're used to are suddenly not available anymore. Um, so if that's important to you, then maybe you can use it, but um, Erwet is perfectly fine as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Olet. It was interesting. Est-ce que tu as l'heure, toi ouais.